Fernando Hussey here, right at the side of US 95 in the middle of nowhere, Nevada, my favorite place, um, at another fabulous abandoned site. It's actually one of my favorite abandoned places that I've ever found. I've been here a few times before to do photo shoots. It's an abandoned brothel. And even better than that, it's for sale. <laughs> I've done a couple photo shoots at this brothel before, even though it's right at the intersection of US 95 and the Lida cutoff that goes up towards Gold Point Ghost Town. Not that many people stop here. Very few people even bother to turn off on this Lida cutoff. So it's pretty remote, pretty deserted. And, uh, I don't know. The few times I've been in here, no one hassled me. So let's go in and take a look. <laughs> The front door of the brothel is all boarded up, so you can't really go in the front anymore. But fortunately for us, there's a big old hole in the chain link fence so we can just sneak in and go around back. There's all kinds of access points into this brothel. The first time I came here, it was pretty well fenced off and it was really hard to get in, but it looks a lot easier now. I mean, look at this. It almost looks like you could just walk right up these stairs and go in the door. Let's see if we can. Oh hey, look at this. This looks like this was the laundry room. Now actually, the person who told me about this brothel, brothel in the first place is a photographer friend of mine who stumbled on it one day while he was cruising around the desert and he took as a souvenir Oh, this door's locked. He took a, a there was kind of like a a list of rules for the laundry room in here, I guess, like, you know, how many times a week you could do the laundry, blah, 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 how much soap do you use? He took that as a souvenir. Anyways, that, that door was a dead end, couldn't get in that way, but that's okay. There's all kind of other access points in here. Can't get in there, that's the, just the water heater. But I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, I can go around the back to get in. Because when I did a photo shoot here once, that was exactly how we got in. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Look at this crawl space. Is there anything creepier in the entire world than a crawl space under an abandoned brothel? I think not. Doesn't look like there's much down there, though. Just some beer cans. Keep going around the back. I mean, this brothel is pretty remote. Again, with a lot of these places, I don't understand how it stayed in business. Oh, how creepy was that? I guess it wants us to go in this door. <laughs> I was going to go in this side, though, first. Anyways, with a lot of these brothels, they're out here in the middle of nowhere. I guess just uh, long-haul truckers and miners pretty much makes up all their business. So the way this brothel was constructed, it was basically... It's a U-shape. I think this was a pretty common brothel foundation or formation. They'd put two long trailers on either side and then a parlor up front and then the two long trailers were where all the working girls rooms were. At least that's how it's been in other brothels I've been in and this one looks like it was no different. Wow. The first time I came to this place was probably in 2013, 2014, so about three years ago. And it looks to be a little more busted up now than it was on my first visit. Even though it's really out there, people are coming in, apparently. People like me. Look, here's the... Heater? Oh, that's a spa. I know there is a jacuzzi tub in one of the rooms up there, so maybe this was the controls to that. Wow, far out. Let's go see. Apologies for the light shifting. Okay, now this is where I've always gone in in the past. Oh, wow, I don't know. Maybe it's... Oh, now it's... Oh, no, it's not boarded up good. Whew. Close call. All right. Are you ready to see what's inside this fabulous abandoned brothel? Coming into the first room here. This was the jacuzzi that I was just talking about. And yes... Those controls were right under the floor here, so that makes sense. Must have been like the fantasy suite or something, you know? It looks like there was a big mirror there at one time. Oh, 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, other than that, carpeting on the walls and a pretty big jacuzzi tub. It's full of toilet paper now, that's kind of gross. And then I don't know if you can see, but right out the door, there's the US 95. All these people blissfully cruising along, having no idea what the hell is going on over here. Go into the next room. So this was like the main building. And then that hallway down there was one of those long trailers I was talking about. So we'll start out here though. If we'd been able to go in the main door, the front door, this is where we would have come in. Look at this. There's like this vestibule. That's the front door. You come in, turn around here like, let's pretend like we're a customer here. You would come here and look at this, man. There was a little like speakeasy type door. I guess you knocked on the door and then the madam would open the window. State your business. What are you here for? Well, I'm here for some pussy. Oh, okay. Not here to use the restroom. I'm here to get some puss. So then they would let you in. And now you're in the main room, which is notable for several reasons. Had a big bar area. I'm going to guess these mattresses weren't in here originally. <laughs> but those couches were probably set up in a nice little seating area. But my favorite thing about this room is this wallpaper. Look at this freaking wallpaper, man. It's all beautiful Alphonse Mucha style painted ladies. Look at this. This wallpaper is out of control, man. Let's steal some. So this was the main room. Wow, imagine coming in here after a long day driving truck or mining for gold. Now I just want to drink and some puss. So you come up here to the bar. There probably used to be all kind of liquor bottles back there. Let's go back behind the bar. Shit, this linoleum's still in pretty good shape. An old phone book. Oh, look, it's open to the escort pages. <laughs> That's appropriate. Funny. Look at this, yeah. This was behind the bar. It's where they used to wash out the glasses. There's a whole bunch of stir sticks for like making coffee, I guess. There's a bunch of coffee lids in here, look. Wow. Old paper plates. Another photographer I know found a napkin here that had a logo of the brothel's name on it. Let's see if I can get so lucky with this. Ron Methuselah. Rum. Oh, it's a kind of a rum. Yeah. Promotional napkin. That's no good. Wow, look at this. I like the linoleum inside the cabinets too. Crazy. Holy cow. Last time I was in here, like I said, it wasn't as busted up, but it was darker because the walls weren't as broken. So I guess it being busted up is kind of useful because now I can actually see. But it's still pretty dark in the kitchen, so good thing I brought my headlamp. Let me turn that on. Let's see what's in here. Some old busted up drawers. I guess this was like, looks like maybe it was a phone switchboard or something. I don't know what all these little boxes were for. There's like little slots on top of each one. I wonder what that could have been. Here's the kitchen though. Wow, look at this. Far out, man. This is where all the prostitutes cook their dinner. Or maybe the madam cooked for them. I don't know. Looks like some cabinets over here. Holy shit, let's see if there's anything in the fridge. Nope, it's empty. Maybe the freezer? One empty can of Miller Lite. Well, that's a brothel for you. you gotta keep the girls from getting too fat. Looks like they did used to have sugar at one time. Wow, look at this, the lid of a little sippy cup. And the sink is full of all kinds of crap. Some old bean sprouts. Yeah, this other photographer I know, she said she found a napkin with the brothel's logo on it in the kitchen somewhere. 
Shit, I wonder if there's any more. I sure would like one of those napkins. Maybe these are them down here. Oh, these look like just plain white napkins. Dang. Wow. <laughs> Behind the kitchen. Oh, a lot of rat shit on the floor. We gotta be careful. It's hantavirus. Behind the kitchen, there's this other room. This is just a wood paneled room, man. I don't know. Maybe this was like the dining room because it's got linoleum flooring. Far out, man. Far out. It's a bunch of busted old stuff. Oh, here's like a, this must have been the pantry. Look at this. Dang, it's trash now. Look at this. Look at that, a yellow cake mix bag. Gold Star air conditioner. Really not much in here, an old Folgers can. Kind of interesting though how there's this little window in the wall here at the end of the pantry. I don't know, maybe that's where the girls sneaked in to get their midnight snack. What are these playing cards down here? What is this? Sorry about the light. Star Trek Uno cards, yeah, somebody had fun here. Holy cow. Mouse traps, <laughs> they're not doing their job. There's mouse shit everywhere here. All right, man, well, so that was the kitchen and the main room, but let's go back down one of those hallways. Remember, it's arranged like a U-shape, so there's one hallway on this side and one on the other. Let's go down this. Okay, we're going down the left-hand hallway. It looks like one of the little bedrooms. Old mattress. There's a bathroom here. I mean, unlike other abandoned brothels I've been in, Janie's Ranch, at least this one, you know, each room has a bathroom. So it looks like to me, this was the type of brothel where the girls lived in the room where they did their business. Over at Janie's Ranch, the madam had it set up to where the business all took part on one place, one side of the brothel. The girls lived on the other side. Another room with another bathroom. Seems like pretty standard, like they all had their own tub, toilet, and sink, and then their own little wood paneled bedroom with some storage. Crazy. Can you imagine the kind of crazy stuff that went on here? Actually, I can, and the reason I can is I wrote a blog about this brothel after I did a photo shoot here and uh, some of my readers messaged me with a bunch of historical information so I actually know the story of this brothel and it's really interesting it was called the Cottontail Ranch and it's about three hours outside Vegas three hours north of Vegas so people from Vegas would fly up like high rollers but it was mostly just local miners and uh, truck drivers and whatnot. But they did get the occasional high roller, including Howard Hughes used to come to this brothel. That's right, he had a prostitute here that he liked. His name was Sonny. And he used to come up here and visit her all the time. And then one time he was up here visiting, he used to have his private pilot take him up, right? Well, the pilot left without him for some reason. And he was stranded up here at the side of the road, and this miner that was driving towards Vegas from wherever he was working his mining claim stopped and gave him a ride. And he didn't know who it was. He's just some old busted man standing at the side of the highway in the desert. But, you know, they drove back to Vegas together three hours. They got to talking and became pretty good friends. And when Howard Hughes died, he supposedly left a bunch of his money to that random stranger who gave him a ride that day but of course his heirs contested the will because who the fuck is this guy melvin dumar that was his name some random mormon miner out in the middle of nowhere says he knows howard hughes that can't be true i'm not really sure what happened i think it's still in litigation but isn't that crazy you never know when you stop to pick up a hitchhiker who it might be and the only person who could possibly answer that mystery or solve that mystery is the prostitute, Sunny. She might be able to confirm if Hughes was abandoned here once. But I guess no one's been able to find her, so. 
we may never know the answer to that mystery. But hey, let's go down that other hallway on the other side. Wait, hold on, let me look in this room first. Oh, this was like, oh, this must have been like the main bathroom because it's right off the main room. So like visitors could use this without going into one of the girls' rooms. Let's we'll see what's in this cupboard. Gotta have a clean toilet bowl. Wow, this is crazy. I think this is the door we came in from the jacuzzi room. The blow shot. Oh, no, no, maybe it's not. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, but it's not. This is a different room. This is... I don't know. Here's some blank checks. Pay to the order of... Oh, I've never heard of anybody getting paid with a check at a brothel. Except for when Jerry Springer got busted for... He was the mayor of Cincinnati, and he paid for sex with a check like a dumbass and got busted. <laughs> this looks like it was just a master bedroom. Maybe this is where the uh, madam lived. And speaking of the madam, I actually know a lot of history about her, too, and she was a bad-ass woman. Oh, you want to see something gross? Bleah. Yeah, the madam of this brothel, her name was Miss Beverly Harrell. She was a nice Jewish girl from New York. She moved to Hollywood to become a star, and that didn't really work out, so her and her boyfriend started an escort service and basically started pimping girls in Beverly Hills. Then they got run out of town, and she kind of headed up this way, because I guess by now, pimping is what she knew, and she started this brothel on land that she was leasing from the BLM. It was like a lease-to-own kind of a deal. Oh, hold on. Here's the other side of that. Remember there, I told you there was that window in the pantry? I don't know why there's that window there. It's weird. This just looks like storage on this side. Anyways, Ms. Beverly Harrell comes out here, starts up this brothel on land that she's leasing from the BLM. She's doing well. Business is booming. She knew how to run a business. So, before you know it, the BLM gets wind of it. And, oh my God, it's just not good for the federal government to be seen as a landlord to a brothel. So they revoked her lease. Or, I don't know, did something to shyster her out of it. And uh, she was pissed. But rather than just sit down and take it like so many of us do, she decided to run for assemblywoman of this district. As she put it, it would take the madam of an honest house to show those fools how to run a country or a county. So she ran this really cool campaign, and supposedly she actually won the popular vote in this little tiny county, Esmeralda County. But the good old boys that run the show here were not about to let some Jewish madam from Beverly Hills be a assembly person. So they rigged the election, supposedly, and she lost. And then she just kind of lived out the rest of her days here running this. Oh, she, she reopened the brothel. She moved it. Uh, she bought some land like right down the road from where, the, where her BLM lease had been. And she just ran uh, the brothel for the rest of her days. She lived out the rest of her life here. And she's buried right up the road in the Goldfield Cemetery. Oh, hey, look, I'm here. Ah. <laughs> Are you hiring, brothel? Another bathroom. So, what does this say? Pussy is the best when it's young and smooth. Yep. So they tell me. Anyways, you can see why this is one of my favorite abandoned places in Nevada. Just because the history is really interesting. The ruins are in decent shape, although much worse shape than they were when I first came in here. I've actually done two photo shoots here. One of them was kind of impromptu, though, because I didn't know what was going on. There you go. A bed with a sink in it. Yeah, then I did a second photo shoot here with a photographer and another model who has since stopped modeling nude. And she's also since done me dirty. So I've considered writing her out. But I'm a nice girl. I wouldn't do that. Far out. Anyway, that's about all there is to the Cottontail Ranch Abandoned Brothel. 
I mean, judging by the state it's in, since the last time I've been here, I'm going to guess it's probably not going to be here all that much longer. Um, I mean, this, it is for sale, the land, but I don't know if anybody will actually buy it. I just feel like it'll get tore up so badly that it won't really be worth looking at anymore, but it's pretty cool right now. <laughs> Whew, I could stay here all day, but I have to go. I'm on my way to Yosemite to go camping. So, on the road again. Until then, until the next exciting spot, this is Wonder Hussy signing off.